So here we have the pathogen, a bacteria, for example, and it expresses uh, PAMP, certain PAMPs, and has a special composition. Now, the complement protein can help in the phagocytizing process. So the complement proteins can uh, bind to this uh, pathogen as well. And the macrophage can identify this pathogen either by uh, receptors that recognizes the PAMP, such as a toll-like receptor, and also a, it can also recognize a pathogen by the complement protein on it. So with the complement receptor recognizing the complement protein on the pathogen. And so with this, the macrophage can engulf this pathogen and form a phagosome, not a phagolysosome, this is an error here. And the macrophage also cont contains a lysosome, which, is, which has uh, basically an acidic environment within it, with many enzymes such as hydrolases. And this lysosome and phagosome will combine together to form a phagolysosome. When it does this, uh, the acidic environment will essentially destroy this pathogen into small bits and pieces, into small antigens as well. Now, what good is this? The macrophage can actually now take the antigen and express it on its cell surface through an MHC receptor. So therefore, a macrophage is known as an antigen-presenting cell. With this, the macrophage can also stimulate the adaptive immune cells within the, li within the lymph node. This is exactly the same as a dendritic cell. The dendritic cell is also an antigen-presenting cell. So now, the macrophage and dendritic cell, for example, once they have uh, engulfed this pathogen and, ha and, and is beginning to express it, it will start secreting cytokines as well to enhance the immune response. And so the cytokines secreted by the macrophage and the dendritic cells are cytokines CXCL8, which attracts more leukocytes. Also, interleukin-6, which activates the lymphocytes, uh, the BNT cell, and stimulates the liver to make more proteins for the immune response. And the, uh, it will also secrete cytokines interleukin-1b, uh, which increases vascular permeability, allowing more leukocytes to enter the specific tissue interleukin-12, which activates the natural killer cells and differentiation of a naive CD4 cell into a T helper 1 cell. And finally, uh, lastly, uh, it also secretes tumor necrosis factor alpha, or TNF-alpha, which is a pro-inflammatory cytokine important in stimulating, promoting the inflammatory response. Now, let's just concentrate on a macrophage again, specifically a macrophage, not a dendritic cell, an activated macrophage and see what it causes throughout the body during a pathogen invasion and uh, infection, for example. So activated macrophage secretes cytokines such as interleukin-1b, interleukin-6, and TNF-alpha. So what does this do uh, to different uh, organs in the body and to our body itself? Well, it will stimulate the liver, for one, and it will stimulate the liver to produce many different types of substances, proteins, such as fibrinogen, important in repair and then it also secretes the liver also secretes a protein called c-reactive protein which is a mediator of inflammation and it's also used to measure inflammation within our body the liver also produces a mando, mannose binding lectin which is an important component of the complement system it activates a certain pathway in the complement system but we don't really want to talk about that it's just important to know that the liver secretes these substances during an invasion of a pathogen, infection, inflammatory process, etc. So what else does the activated macrophage do? Well, the cytokines the macro activated macrophage secretes causes the hypothalamus, fat, and muscles to increase the body temperature by different, by different means. And now you might think to yourself, aha, this is why uh, people get fevers when they have an infection, for example, right? The activated macrophage also secretes cytokines, which targets the bone marrow epithelial cells uh, to basically uh, produce more neutrophils, causing more neutrophils to come to the injured area or infiltrated area. And most importantly, the activated macrophage secretes cytokines, with, which target dendritic cells. Cytokines TNF-alpha uh, stimulates the dendritic cells to migrate into the lymph nodes. 
So the dendritic cells, the antigen presenting cells, to migrate to the lymph node to initiate the adaptive immunity, to activate the adaptive immune cells. And this is why the dendritic cell is an important connection between the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system, because it's an antigen presenting cell which activates the adaptive immune system. Also, a macrophage is also an antigen presenting cell, and so it can connect the adapt innate and adaptive immune systems together. However, in this case, the tissue dendritic cells play a more important role. And so the tissue dendritic cell, when it recognizes a pathogen, it will become activated. And when the dendritic cell is activated, it will undergo what's called licensing, enabling it to move into the lymph nodes, to migrate into the lymph nodes. So the dendritic cell will phagocytize the pathogen and express the pathogen on an MHC molecule, begin processing it to express it on an MHC molecule. And, li and then once it does this, it will undergo licensing, which basically the, where the dendritic cells begin expressing certain protein on the cell surface. Proteins, for example, CCR7 here in orange. And CCR7 is essentially like a magnet, uh, which, uh, which has an attraction to chemical signals coming from the lymph node, chemokines. So just to draw again here, uh, we are in the site of it, um, inflammation and infection here, where the pathogen has infiltrated the body. Okay, and so this activated dendritic cell, as I mentioned earlier, expresses, uh, for example, CCR7, which is attracted to a chemokine, CCL21, produced by the lymph nodes, allowing the dendritic cell to move into, to travel through the lymph vessel and travel to the lymph node because of this attraction between CCR7 and CCL21. So here we have the activated dendritic cell with the antigen of the pathogen on the MHC complex with the expressed uh, CCR7 on the cell surface will be attracted to the chemokine CCL21 and travel to the lymph node through the lymph vessel as shown here. And so this lymph vessel is traveling towards the lymph node with the dendritic cell. Let's just leave the dendritic cell there for now and we'll go back to it. So what else? Uh, do we find in this uh, site of infection, site of inflammation? So we have possibly infected macrophage uh, if, if uh, the macrophage somehow becomes infected. And so what happens to an infected cell or an infected macrophage is that a natural killer cell will typically come along and kill the infected cell and through apoptosis or cell, some cell destruction. And the process in which the natural killer cell kills an infected cell is a bit more complex uh, which, because it includes inhibitory signals and stimulating signals, but it will be for another video. Um, and also neutrophils will of course quickly go inside the area of, of infiltration. And let's just say after some time many cells become infected around this area. And so it is important that the adaptive immune cells become activated. And so in the next video, what we'll concentrate on is how the dendritic cell will travel to the lymph node and activate the adaptive immune cells because it's bringing the antigen of the pathogen with it. So that's for the next video.